Hey, welcome to Productivity Shop Slow Jams. This is how I use Alfred, and this is going to be going through all of the settings. I'm just going to explain as much as I know about each setting from top to bottom. If you didn't watch the other videos, I kind of give you my favorite features from the free version and the power pack. So if I already covered it in that video, refer to that video, I'll let you know. Let's go. Okay, so I'm going to do command space, command comma to open up the Alfred preferences. Okay, let's start at general. Launch Alfred on login. Pretty self-explanatory. Alfred hotkey. You can set it here. I'll show you how to change it to command space in the other video. Where are you? You can search for videos. Whenever you go to eBay or Google, it will do the international version or a specific version. Let's say if you speak Portuguese and you want to use Amazon in Brazil, you can do that and request permissions. These are the permissions that Alfred needs to function. You can go ahead and push the button and it'll trigger the preference inside of the security and privacy panel. Pretty self-explanatory. Let's keep going. Features, default results. Applications will be in your default search scope. And for options, fuzzy capital letters. So let's say I wanna open up Google Chrome. If I just wanna type GC, it'll read G and C from Google Chrome and then give you an easier, faster way to open up the application with fuzzy results. Another thing you can do is add applications keywords in the default results. So if I type in Beats 1, it'll go ahead and open up the music app. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. I'm going to keep it on. This is your default search scope, this part right here, and I covered it a little bit in the other video. So you can add images, documents, and contacts to be in your default search scope. And again, to get outside of the default search scope, just do command space space one more time and then it'll search your entire hard drive if you want to search all file types all the time you can select this but it's not recommended if you want to search for a file without doing command space space you can do open test.scpt and it'll automatically open that while searching your entire hard drive or you can do find test and then it'll just reveal it in the finder now there's some folders that alfred automatically doesn't search like right here, I have a hard drive. So if I want to add my hard drive to this list, I can just drag it there and you can see that it added volumes 5TB. So now whenever I search Alfred, it'll search these folders as well in my full search, not the default search scope. Fallbacks, we talked a little bit about that. If you want a fallback result, whenever Alfred does not find a result, like where is Ikea? If I wanted Google Maps to show up, instead of just Google, I can go to setup fallback results and then I can add one of the ones here or I can do my custom web searches Let's say I want to do SoundCloud. So if I do command space, where is Ikea? SoundCloud will show up as the default result. I usually just leave Google and that's it. Awesome. Moving on. File search. This is the quick file search mode. So the command space space. If you want to disable that, you, you can take that off here. Open, just like I showed you. Revealing files, find. You can also change the keywords to whatever you want. So maybe you want to just use O. So I can do O space test.scpt and it'll find it here. I'll go ahead and change it back to open because I like that one. And then for here, you can select things that you don't want to show. So messages, I don't really like to search through those. So that's an example. Result limit, I like to do the maximum. For navigation, fuzzy matching, what we just talked about, it'll also search for files. For this, shortcuts use left and right for folder navigation. What you can do is you can locate a file and then Let's do fill out timesheet test. You can search for a file and then if I push the right key, it's going to navigate to that particular path. Now you can use enter to open folders in Finder. So if I do, let's say invitations, if I go to invitations and then I do the right key and then I push enter, it's gonna open up. If I don't have that activated and I do the right key, and I push enter, it's gonna go to the next level folder. So I kind of like having it go to the next level folder rather than open up, because if I'm using the file search navigation window, I can just do command O and it'll reveal the folder that I want. So for previous path, you can it's a shortcut and you can browse the previous path that we just looked at. So that's a cool shortcut that I don't use too much. For buffer, um, I usually leave this as is. And basically the last couple searches that I did, I'm gonna do command space and I'm gonna use the up key. 
And so I can go to the searches or the queries that I put in Alfred before. So let's say I wanna go back to test.scpt. Usually it'll keep the same one. The last thing I did, but if I wanna to go to invitations, I just do up, boom, there it is. For compatibility, I'm not too sure what that is. <laughs> so I'll skip over it. And then for advanced escape path on copy path to clipboard action. Now this is used in terminal. So that way terminal knows that a space is just a space in the file name or folder name, and it's not a, another command. So if I do copy escape on path and I go back to invitations and I'm going to do F11 copy path to clipboard and I'll go to text edit so you can see what it looks like. I went ahead and pasted it and it should have added escapes like this. I'll go ahead and research and follow up in the comments. So I'm going to take that off, run Apple scripts instead of opening, pretty self-explanatory. So if I do test.scpt, it's going to find the script. And when I push enter, it's going to run the script and not actually open it. And again, if I want to open it, I'll just do command O or I can just do command enter and it's going to reveal where the script is. For performance, here are some performance things. I don't know too much about it. For sorting, touch folders after opening them. It just adds a timestamp to let the folder know that it's been accessed. So if you search for that folder again, like in my other video, whenever we did fonts, fonts is going to come to the top because it's been recently searched for. There we go. So it's at the top because it was recently searched for. Boom. All right, universal actions. I went over this in the other video. Let's see, actions. Here are some things where you can control how universal actions look. Let's say I'm gonna go ahead and activate file actions. I can control which options show up. So I usually never use delete, so I can take that off. Copy as plain text, save as snippet. I don't use that one, these. You can basically take off some of the options. Also, I'm going to disable workflow keyword inputs. So if you have some workflows that use file actions, you can just disable them from your default file actions. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these away and then go here and do F11. And you can see that the list is much smaller, which I prefer. Cool. Next, web search. We went over that. To add a web search, you can go here and then go through the process of searching a website and then entering the information. That way you can create your own custom web search. URLs and history. So if I type shayluke.com, it's going to recognize it as a URL and I'm going to push enter and it'll go ahead and add the HTTPS in front of it. Now, I don't have a security certificate on my website because there's no information traded, but I'm going to do the productivity shop.co and it's going to recognize that it's a URL, put HTTPS in front of it, and then it'll go ahead and navigate to the URL with the proper prefix. Web bookmarks, it can go automatically search your web bookmarks in Chrome, so you can activate that here. I really don't use it that much. Clipboard history, we went over. And for advanced here, the auto paste on return, I go ahead and deactivate that. So whenever I go to, let's say I'm gonna copy this, and then I go to my program that I wanna paste it in, when I do Option Command H and then push Enter, it's gonna go ahead and put the result on the clipboard and then I can do Command V. Otherwise, if I don't have this activated and I do Option Command H and push Enter, it's gonna automatically paste right away. I prefer not having it paste automatically right away. It's up to you. For a maximum clip size, you can change it. I'm gonna go ahead and put it to unlimited. And then move items to the top of clipboard history when used. So if I do one and I copy it, and then I copy it, and I'm gonna do clipboard history, and I'm gonna use, let's say, one, two, three. The next time that I go to clipboard history, one, two, three is gonna be on the top. So you can change that if you don't want it that way. Snippets, this is a functionality with Alfred that is, was a couple of versions ago. And basically you can use snippets to quickly type things. So if I type in exclamation, exclamation, CMD, it's gonna go ahead and paste the resulting one. Now I had to make sure that this was selected and that the actual one was selected too. I'm actually gonna leave this one, I like it. I don't use this too much because I use Typeinator and there's a video on why I use Typeinator right there. Cool, and then you can go ahead and create a custom uh, keyboard shortcut for the snippets. I'll just make one up, I'll do J. So if I do Option Command J, all of the snippets will come there. I think I'll leave that keyboard shortcut. Calculator. Basically, Alfred has a calculator, so you can do 100 plus 10, and it's gonna go ahead and do the results. And then you can also have these options here. You can, uh, you don't have to have the comma. So if I do 
1000, it doesn't view it as a number, but if I ignore the thousands grouping separator, then it will recognize it as a number. I think I'm gonna leave that on. And then output, you can change the options there too. So if I do a thousand plus a thousand, it's gonna be 2000, but then I can go ahead and just have that little comma removed if I don't want it there. I'm gonna leave it in. Dictionary, this one's one that I use pretty often. So I'm gonna do define cake and then it'll go ahead and give you the definitions of that. And then you can also do spell. So if I do spell C-A-I-K-E, it's going to see something similar and maybe I spelled it wrong. And then you can go ahead and push enter and it'll put the properly spelled word on the clipboard. Pretty cool. For contacts, you can enable them. And then, you know, if you wanna email a contact, I can do E, Luke. It'll go ahead and open up mail in your default uh, browser. You can also use Gmail to compose. These are some cool options. You can do subject line, file attached, and then count file attached. Um, that's pretty cool too. So if I go ahead and do this, open with mail, F11, mail to, hello at the productivitystop.co. It's gonna go ahead and put this format. So the name of the file name and file attached. So you can control that here. Um, music, it's like a little mini player. Let's see how it works. Basically, it's going to go ahead and import your library and then you can search for, you know, whatever. Let's search for Cordio, which is my background music. And you can go ahead and push it and then it'll and then it'll start playing. Keywords, some keywords that you can use for going to the next track in the music app. And then advanced, you can include podcasts, videos, and make a playlist if you want to. Um, one password I showed in the other video, um, I'm not going to show it for security reasons, but basically you can search for, I'll go ahead and click it and then show you, but basically, so if I want to log into fonts.com, I can just search for fonts.com and then the one password thing will show up and then enter the information for you. Pretty cool. Okay, system, went through this in the other video. These are basically just keywords to control your computer. So if I do command space mute, it's gonna go ahead and toggle the mute. If I do volume up, it's gonna go ahead and turn the volume up a little bit. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, terminal, so this is whenever you go to a path, let's say I wanna open terminal here. This is where you can choose um, what application you wanna use. And I go ahead and insert this script that I found on GitHub. So that way, whenever I go to open terminal, I'm going to do open terminal here and it's gonna open up iTerm, which is my preferred command line interface program. I'll post the link for this script in the description box. Large type is pretty cool. I've used it before. Like if someone needs to read something on my computer, I can say, hey, here is the info and then do command L and it'll show up really big. It comes in handy every once in a while. And then previews, if you want to preview a file inside of the Alfred search results, you can go ahead and search for it. So I'll search for a screenshot or just this was fine and I'll do preview and then it'll open there. So let's say screen, I'll do paris.jpg and then I'll do shift and then it's a picture of me jumping in Paris. <laughs> with the baguette in the bag. Cool. So those are basically all the settings. Workflows, I'll probably do another video on that. Appearance, I went through in the other video. Basically you can find the appearance options here and then hide the hat in the Alfred window. So the hat can either show up like this or not. You can hide the result icon. So now it says one, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But if you don't want that, you can have them go away for a cleaner look. You can disable auto highlight top results. So if I do that, there'll be the, the highlighted bar there, but if not, that, and then, yeah. Oop, there we are again. Basically, pretty self-explanatory here. Remote, I've never actually used this before, so I'm going to do some more research and maybe add a video later. Um, I need to get into it. And then for the advanced, if you're having trouble, for example, this is a new computer and it needed to re-index a couple times before the spotlight index worked and I was able to find my files, it took a couple restarts, but basically you can clear your application cache then rebuild your OS met metadata here so that way Alfred can find your latest files if you find that it's not finding stuff. And then history, store your typed queries. So if I do command space, the last thing that I typed will be there. And then if I go up, it'll be there too. 
and then learning top result keyboard keyword latching that's what i showed in the first video so if i do ph and then i select photoshop it's going to start to put photoshop at the top if you don't want that to happen you can disable it here here's some settings for notifications and then also, this is what I use a lot. I sync my Alfred library to Dropbox. That way the preferences are saved across computers. You do need the power pack for this. And then for action modifier, if I want to go ahead and search with Finder, let's say I'll do command space Paris, and then I can go ahead and do option return, and it's going to search in the Finder if I want to. Sometimes that comes in handy. If I want to reveal in Finder, I can just do command space Paris, and then go here and do command return and it will show it inside of the finder. If I want to action all the results, which I don't want to do, but basically let's say if I did Paris and then I wanted to open up all of the results, I would do alt enter and it'll go ahead and open them all. Usage is pretty cool. You can see how many times you use it per day. Help, this is a good place to go for help and then updates. Yeah, so I kind of ran through that quickly. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching and yay, Alfred. <laughs>